have we got next? Please welcome to the stage, it's Connor Murray! Come on, Connor! There he is, start the clock. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Good, I'll crack straight on with the comedy, so there's no need to dilly-dally. I find that uh, very attractive women and pigeons are very alike in that if I walk behind them on the street for more than three or four steps, <laughs> they assume I'm trying to follow them and they really awkwardly speed up their walk. <laughs> Honestly, like, I, I don't know what those attractive women are afraid of. It's not like I'm gonna just chase after some attractive woman on the street and sexually assault her. <laughs> Pigeons, on the other hand. Yeah. <laughs> they have a right to be concerned. <laughs> Sexy little minxes. <laughs> walking around like they own the place. <laughs> they have a coming, they have a coming. I have other, some other strange stuff I wanted to talk to you about, sure. I might as well get on with it. Uh, so I've got, uh, I've got a three-year-old niece now, and for the first time in a long time, I've had to watch a lot of cartoons. And the shittest cartoon that I have to watch is Thomas the Tank Engine. And Thomas the Tank Engine is mainly a shit cartoon because Thomas the Tank Engine is a train, which sort of severely limits the possibilities of the show. <laughs> the fat controller comes up to Thomas and says, eh, Thomas, there's a big fire over the horizon by the old farmyard. Maybe we should go over and investigate and have a big adventure and maybe save some lives. <sighs> Tell me this, fat controller, can you see train tracks going over the horizon <laughs> to the old farmyard? Uh, no, Thomas, no train tracks, no train tracks. Well, then I guess we're not going to fucking investigate, are we? <laughs> because I'm a fucking train. I need the train tracks. I've explained this to you like a thousand times before. Last week you were on to me about a child stuck down a well. I haven't even got any arms. Look, fat controller, unless you need me to cart goods from location A to location B, I'm pretty much fucking useless to you. The people on that farm are going to have to horribly burn to death. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Thomas, that's, uh, that's very dark. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't come back the same from Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> None of us came back the same from Vietnam, Fat Controller. None of us. Did anybody else see that episode? or? <laughs> <laughs> it was just me, just me. Right, okay, fair enough, fair enough. It is, it is funny the lies that we tell to children to protect them from the truth. For instance, when I was a young boy, my father was bald. He still is bald, he hasn't grown out of it, I don't want to give you that impression. <laughs> no, but, and I asked him, I said one day, I said to him, Father, how did you go bald? And my father said to me, well, one day I went to the zoo and I got too close to the cages of the monkeys and a monkey ripped out all my hair. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking to yourself, Connor, that's a horrifying thing to tell a child. Why would your father tell you that? But my father was protecting me from a much, much more terrifying reality. <laughs> and that reality is male pattern baldness. <laughs> My father couldn't tell me, just, Connor, one day, for genetic reasons, <laughs> your hair will just randomly fall out. <laughs> As a five-year-old with a deep understanding of genetics, that would have terrified me. <laughs> I would lay awake at night, dreaming about, like, male pattern baldness or whatever. Instead, I just dreamed about ravenous monkeys tearing at my scalp. <laughs> I was easily able to deal with that as a child. <laughs> So yeah, I, I, I was watching the TV in the middle of the day there recently because I'm a comedian and comedy allows you to watch TV in the middle of the day when you should be at work. But um, <laughs> I was, and a TV show came on the EPG and it was called Come Dine With Me Down Under. 
and I thought to myself, this sounds interesting. Hey! There he is, Connor Murray, finalist number one. Our first survivor! Yeah! And he really is that small, isn't he? Tiny, he used to be a jockey. All right. 